Our travels through New Zealand continues and we are hopping on a flight from Auckland to Christchurch. The Christchurch is the largest city on Southern Island and the point from which we will further explore the southern part of New Zealand. So we're driving on the east side of a South Island and we're going through a major agricultural area. I was expecting to see a lot of sheep, which we have, but surprisingly, there's, there are also a lot of cattle. There are a lot of green pastures out here, so these cows are getting a lot of green grass and a lot of sunshine. A massive mountain chain called South Alps runs along the length of the South Island. These mountain tops provide most spectacular network of natural freshwater streams, significantly adding to the fertility of the land and the natural scenery of New Zealand. Our roads through South Island followed some of these water pathways, which led us to a small city of Geraldine. The cute and quaint town of Geraldine, with its only 2,800 residents, offers a lot of charm and a whole lot of history. The town is closely connected to its Irish heritage, from which it got its name. We are making a quick stop to grab some lunch and refreshments and to visit one of the most popular shops in this little town. Traveling through New Zealand, you're going to find lots of small shops offering healthy and delicious foods. Right next to our yeah. shop was a famous restaurant called Verde, which is a part of a food and wine trail here in Southern Island. The restaurant Verde is located in a huge, beautiful garden and it specializes in artisan food. If you like nature and you enjoy fresh natural foods, this is definitely a place to visit. One of its best features are these blossoming cherry trees. And for me, that's a reason enough to come back and have a lunch in this place. Very hot in Oakland. Are you Auckland? She's oh, no. in We are back on the road, heading south to the higher grounds. October is a mid-spring in New Zealand. And since the South Island is closer to South Pole, temperatures here tend to be slightly cooler than in the North Island. October is a great time to travel to and around New Zealand. It's the middle of the spring, so the weather is often fine and warm but it's still the shoulder season, so even the most popular places aren't especially crowded. The best time to travel to New Zealand is November, December, and January. However, the cheapest time to fly from US to New Zealand is in August. Personally, I think October is wonderful for traveling because all the nature and grass is so fresh and lush. Lake Takapo is about three hours drive southwest of Churchtown. The weather was not the best today, but this lake is known for its incredible blue water. I hope we'll have the chance to see it in its full glory on our way back from the Queenstown. For now, roads are once again taking us to the higher grounds, heading southwest towards the Queenstown. It was amazing to experience how quickly vegetation and climate changed and how much temperatures dropped further south we went. We spent a night in the suburbs of Queenstown and when we woke up the next morning, we were up to a huge surprise. Snow and quite a bit of it. Our drive from Christchurch to Queenstown took about six hours. There are roughly 480 some kilometers if you take the State Highway 8. It's cold and we were not quite prepared for the snow this morning. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a warm cup of coffee. And to do that, we're stopping by a local honey producers. 
This little cafe is owned by a local beekeeper specializing in Manuka honey. You can grab a great breakfast here or you can explore all there is about the beekeeping or order any bee products which made this cafe one of the most unique places to be visited. I particularly enjoy this breakfast because I too am a beekeeper. So instead of having coffee, I had to try their special honey and ginger tea. Queenstown is nestled against dramatic Southern Alps and the shores of Southern Islands Lake called Bakatipu. Queenstown is renowned as the adventure capital of the world. This is the place for anyone who's looking for adrenaline pumping activities. Apparently, Queenstown is the home to the world's first and most famous bungee jumps. Personally, I'm a lot more into low-key activities, like discovering new flower blooms. And everywhere we went, New Zealand's flora continued to amaze me. Here's an interesting fact about Queenstown. The town is at the latitude of 45 degrees south. Only two other countries in the world, Chile and Argentina, are at the same latitude. Maori chose not to settle in this area, but for over 700 years, they've been visiting the area to hunt for moa and to find green stone. European settlers didn't set the foot in this place until 1853. Scottish-born settler Nathan Chalmers became the first European to see the Lake Wakatipu. A few years later, after Chalmers' rafting adventure, around 1860, the first European settled in the area beside Lake Wakatipu, now known as the Queenstown. This famous town of only about 28,000 of permanent residents welcomes about 3.3 million visitors per year. To experience it in all its splendor, we're going to take a scenic ride in an iconic skyline gondola. By the way, this is the steepest cable car lift in the southern hemisphere. The gondola is taking us 480 meters up over Lake Wakatipu to the top of Bob's Peak. I definitely agree that this is the best way to experience all the beauty Queenstown has to offer. Lake Wakatipu was formed about 15,000 years ago by a glacier coming down from the northwest, which helped carve the current lake bed. Seeing it from above gave me a new appreciation for the Queenstown's beauty because I could see not only the town, but their botanical gardens, the surrounding mountains, and the magnificent lake itself. We were very fortunate that today was a clear day so that we could enjoy in this 220 degrees panoramic views. Once atop, you can choose to relax with a hot cup of coffee and enjoy the scenery. Or if you're a bit more adventurous, there are great activities both for you and your kids. I'm opting for a warm cup of coffee and a quick dessert. The magnificent riches of the southern New Zealand's mountain ranges were not meant to be secret for too long. Clear and fast creeks like this Arrow Creek brought the gold from the mountains down to valleys, and that changed everything. As of 1862, the gold rush was officially on. Extracting gold attracted a lot of Chinese miners who settled in this area between 1860 and 1880. Often victims of harassment and discrimination, Chinese miners lived on the outskirts of European settlements in isolated villages close to the mining claims. The community consisted mostly of married men. Families financed sons and brothers to work overseas believing they could become wealthy and support their families at home. Some of the reconstructed huts offer today's visitors a sneak peek in a lifestyle of these miners. 
poorly constructed small structures offer to shelter anywhere between two to six men at a time. Once the gold became more scarce, the Chinese community turned into gardening, providing produce to Arrowtown settlement. Life was extremely harsh for these Chinese miners, and many have died and were buried in graves just outside the cemetery or in a Chinese section. The partially restored Arrowhead Chinese settlement is a mute reminder and tribute to the contribution made by Chinese gold miners and business people to this region. Despite how vital they were to the growth and development of certain areas in New Zealand, ignorance and prejudice meant that Chinese were seen as undesirable. And a number of harsh laws were implemented to limit their rights in New Zealand. One of them was a very high entry fee, which helped restrict immigration of Chinese people to New Zealand. One of the most prominent buildings in this small community is known as Achlum Store. The building was originally built by a local gardener called Wang Hop Lee in 1883. The store occupied half the space, some of the goods hanging from the ceiling by hooks and wires. Behind the store were a bank office, kitchen and bedrooms. Despite harshness and discrimination, Chinese people managed to leave a lasting imprint on this new nation. The weather is improving and we are slowly heading back to Christchurch. I've been enjoying all the benefits of an early spring and as you can see every tree was displaying its absolutely best. Now that weather has improved we are able to see the true splendor of this beautiful land. One of the main advantages of New Zealand is the landscape. It has amazingly clean air and incredibly green grass. New Zealand is one of those continents that has it all. As we were heading to Lake Wanaka, I must have made dozens of stops just to absorb this beauty and to take pictures. And just when you think that you cannot outdo the last shot, we arrive to the Lake Wanaka. The lake lies at the eastern foot of the Southern Alps, and it occupies 75 square miles, which is close to about 190 square kilometers. Lake Wanaka is a very popular tourist destination because of its borderline continental climate and easy access to snow and water. The lake lies in a U-shaped valley formed by a glacier erosion during the last ice age more than 10,000 years ago. Fishing is just one of the many outdoor activities popular on this lake. Some of the native fish species include coaro fish, common bully and a long fin eel. But since then, some new species were introduced to lake, like a Chinook salmon, rainbow trout and brown trout. This is definitely a great place for kids. For anyone who's trying to escape big city busyness and is looking for an intimate, family-friendly vibe, this little town is a rare find. All this running around and watching little ducklings looking for the food with their moms and the little sparrows on the side made me hungry as well. So we are heading back in town to find something for dinner tonight.
I've been in New Zealand for a few days now and I still have not tried New Zealand's lamb. So tonight is the night. And tonight's dinner will be served Indian style. As soon as I return to States, I'm gonna put together a simple recipe on how to make a perfect roasted lamb. Last night's dinner was amazing, but we still woke up hungry this morning, so we're gonna grab quick breakfast and off we go. The road takes us over crisp and clear Clutha River, which is the second largest river in New Zealand and the longest in the South Island. To cross the river, we're going to go over famous Red Bridge, which was built in 1940. New Zealand is truly full of surprises. Within a matter of an hour or two, you can find yourself in a completely different surrounding. And the area that we are just about to enter speaks most loudly of New Zealand's green pastures. New Zealand ranks as the second largest exporter of lamb meat in the world. This is going to be one of my favorite spots in New Zealand because when I think about New Zealand, I think about green rolling hills and these look like they are from Hollywood movies. Uh, green uh, color that's hard to describe. It's so lush and fresh and then just it looks like the grass just came out of the ground, which practically it is. It's a springtime. And then uh, on the hills you have thousands and thousands of sheep grazing. Most beautiful sight to see, to experience and to witness it that it's actually real. Because on the pictures you think, well, it could not be. Well, it is. Look at it. I'm going to give you a moment of quiet so that you could enjoy in this pristine scenery. Could have just stayed there to stare at sheep and baby lamb but Zora is telling me that there is a big surprise ahead of us. And so once again the scenery changes as we climb higher up towards the Mount Cook. it all the way down here this is one of the sites you don't want to miss a mountain cook and um, the New Zealand obviously favored this trip because all the skies opened up because we were driven by this uh, same road just a couple of days ago and none of this was uh, revealed to us so we're coming back and I'm really glad that we have taken the same road because I would have missed this it's a perfectly clear day. You can see as far as your eyes can go and the water and the snow, it's, it's magnificent. I'm absolutely speechless, speechless. Mountain Cook is part of the Southern Alps along the western coast of New Zealand's South Island. The area is better known as Auraki Mountain Cook National Park. The park was formally declared in 1953 
when it became uh, one of the United Nations World Heritage Parks along with the Westland National Park. Auraki, or Mount Cook, is the highest mountain in New Zealand. Its height is estimated at 3,720 meters. There is nothing better in the world to clear your mind and to refresh your spirit as being in an open space in nature like this one was. New Zealand is known for a crisp and some of the cleanest air in the world which in part is the reason why I was constantly hungry on this trip. Luckily, good food was everywhere, especially sweet treats like these. And now that we're speaking of food, this is making me think of our recipe of the day, so let's get back to cooking. Do you remember our lamb dish we had at the Indian restaurant? Well, now that I'm back in States, I'm going to show you how to make a perfect lake of lamb. A good New Zealand lamb and fresh herbs from my garden are key to this recipe. I just pick some fresh rosemary, sage, oregano and thyme. And we're going to make a nice rub using these herbs with the coarse salt and a little bit of pepper. I also added some granulated garlic in here. The next step is to simply apply the rub on both sides of the meat. I'm roasting two legs of lamb and as you see I'm rubbing the outside first and then I will apply the rub on the inside of the meat. The next step is optional. You don't have to add extra fresh herbs and garlic in the middle of the leg of lamb, but I like doing it and I also like drizzling it with a little bit of olive oil before I roll it in. It's very important to roll it nice and tight so that all the juices from meat stay in while the meat is cooking. Great thing about this recipe is that you can do all the prep work day ahead. If you're entertaining and you don't have time to fuss with all this work on a day of uh, guest's arrival, you can do this a day or two days in advance and let the meat marinate. In fact, I think it would be even better than roasting it the same day. Now that we have the meat ready, I'll let it sit on a room temperature for about an hour and a half. Let's go to the next step. We're going to preheat some olive oil and then we are going to quickly seal the meat on both sides. Dutch oven would have been a perfect for this particular recipe, but if you don't have a big enough Dutch oven, just use the dish that can go in an oven as well. This next step is called searing, and what it does, it closes the skin or pores of the meat so the juices can stay in while the meat is cooking. Once the meat is nicely seared on both sides, we're going to turn the fire off and add some fresh herbs. So I'm going with a little extra garlic, rosemary, sage and some extra thyme and then I'm going to finish it off with this white port. And now it's ready for the oven. 375 for 20 minutes and then we're going to reduce it to 325 for hour and a half. While meat is roasting, I'm going to work on side dish, which are roasted vegetables. So we're starting with some cauliflower, mushrooms, young potatoes, sweet potatoes, green beans, and some green onions. This is super easy. All you need is salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of granulated garlic, and some olive oil. Use your hands to equally distribute the oil and spices on all the vegetables. I'm preparing extra side of roasted vegetables because they are great not just on a day of serving but also as a side dish for the next day or day after. Thinking and planning ahead helps you feed your family healthier while you save both money and energy. It was wonderful to share this part of New Zealand with all the rest of you. In this episode, we got to explore all kinds of natural beauties, great contrasts, and diversity of New Zealand. New Zealand is a very welcoming and diverse country with a rich history of Maori, Europeans, Pacific Islanders, and Asian immigration. The rich cultural blend 
appeared with the fascinating landscapes and unique flora and fauna makes New Zealand one of the most exciting countries to explore. I will always remember New Zealand as the country who has the cleanest and the bluest skies and the most beautiful green fields. Like in most episodes of this series of Cooking and Kids, the purpose of us taking the cameras out in the world and bringing these stories to you is always to encourage you to open up your mind to traveling and seeing the world together with your family. The biggest riches are often not in the banks, nor is the best education in a classroom. Traveling enriches our lives beyond measures and it teaches us such important life lessons like appreciation and gratitude for the fellow man and this beautiful planet we live on. We are not quite done yet. Uh, remember our lamb in the oven? Well, it's done. And now I'm just gonna show you what that looks like when it's finished. Depending on the size of the leg of lamb and the temperature you're baking this at, the roasting part should go anywhere between hour 45 minutes to hour and 50 minutes. And that is if you like it well roasted like my kids like it. So this particular roast is well done. Okay, now all that's left is to see what this meat looks like inside and to taste it. Before serving it or before cutting it, you should allow meat to rest for at least 20 minutes. Cutting it while it's too hot might release the juices inside the meat. So we wanna make sure to preserve these juices so then when we do cut the meat, the meat is nice, tender, and juicy. Roasted lamb is wonderful served warm, but it's also very good served cold. And it's a great and healthy substitute to cold cuts. This kind of meat, when thinly sliced cold, is wonderful for all sorts of sandwiches. Growing up, lamb definitely was not my favorite meat, but I have learned to like it and I'm making sure that I introduce this meat early on to my kids. Thank you all so much for watching this program and for joining me on my travels to New Zealand. To find out more about our charity and this family program, please visit us at vladavi.com.